Hello, welcome to Old Morgan Studios. Today we're going to talk about fluid mechanics and the steady state, steady flow conditions. Basically, you're going to need this when you're thinking about just fluid flowing through a pipe. I'll show you. Okay, just imagine you have your water hose outside, you're watering your plants or whatever, and you're thinking about the the line that goes from the wall to the to your sprinkler. Imagine you cut a piece in the line and it looks like this. If you're not messing with the valve or turning it on or off or anything like that, it's going to be just flowing straight through the pipe. Okay, the water is going to come in. It's going to come in and it's going to going to come out. There's not going to be any accumulation in here because you're not playing with the valve. That's the steady state part of it. The flow is not changing. And the steady flow it is the M dot. We call it M dot mass flow. The flow in is going to equal the flow out. Steady state, steady flow. Okay. So we got to talk about M dot, this is mass flow. Usually when you're at the gas station or you're talking about flows, they usually say something like gallons per minute. This is just a volumetric flow. It's just taking into account how much volume is flowing through the, your pipe. But in fluid mechanics, we use M dot, mass flow, which is kilograms per second. Or it could be pounds per minute, but when we talk about it in fluid flow, we use metric. Well, a lot of times you use metric, kilograms per second. Okay. So we can break down M dot into density, velocity, and area. Density is just the number of particles per unit volume. Velocity is your motion of each each individual particle, the velocity of it. And the area is your cross-sectional area perpendicular to your flow here in orange. Multiply all these together and you get kilograms per second. If this is kilograms per cubic meter, this is meters per second, and this is meters squared, everything cancels out, and you get kilograms per second. Now, what if you shrink your area out so that you still maintain Steady state, steady flow conditions, right? Steady state, steady flow. But you want to do this. What happens? Well, if you've ever played with the water hose and you stick your thumb halfway uh, out the outlet, you notice the velocity increases. It kind of shoots out faster. But you still have steady state, steady flow because the mass flow rate is going to be the same. It's your velocity that's changing. So let's just look at that. So here we have a scenario where we have a small outlet, big inlet. Your mass flow in equals mass flow out. But let's look at these individual components. Your density is going to be the same because if we're talking about water, and incompressible fluids, incompressible, that means that your velocity isn't changing. Okay. So in order to compensate, your velocity out is going to be larger than your velocity in. And it's compensating for the differences in area. This is like a classic nozzle. But if we're talking about compressible flow, 
imagine this flow is moving so fast that once it gets to the other side, all the particles, they're just bunching up and they're getting closer together. So their density is increasing. In that case, you have what we call compressible flow. And that's the flow that you use when you're talking about rocket engines and the space shuttle. A nozzle in this particular regime, it looks a little different. It looks the opposite of your nozzle in your garden hose, okay? And the velocity is still increasing because as your nozzle is getting larger, it's allowing the particles to expand so the velocity increases. And this whole regime is a whole nother class where you talk about compressible flows and isentropic conditions and things like that. We won't get into that. I just want to just touch base on this simple concept, steady state, steady flow. Mass flow in equals mass flow out. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. OMorganLabs.com, please subscribe.